hello 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 lovely people it is sunny haven't been around for a while so i figured i'd have you bleach with me today sorry that was crooked um yes i wear my screw up shirts this is one of them um but anyway I, it's been a while hadn't done a tutorial so i had a few to do and thought I would walk y'all through it with me. So, um, if you watch some of my other videos, uh, I go over lots of information. Um, I might repeat some stuff just for people that may have not seen my videos. Um, if you haven't seen my videos, you haven't seen Rico probably. This is Rico. There's a glare on the camera, but He's real, he's a turkey, he's lovable, and he's the star of the show most of the time. So, um, so anyway, um, I'll let you kind of, or I'll walk you through what I do. Um, first of all, if my shirts are bigger than uh, a medium, so if they're large, extra large, and above, um, I put them on foam boards. I like actually, well... I usually I should put bags over my boards but I was lazy so I didn't so um, the boards are foam boards from Walmart actually a lot of people use foam boards from the Dollar Tree and now that the Dollar Tree is $1.25 it's a lot cheaper at Walmart so uh, these are the Ross foam boards from Walmart and they're 88 cents so they're 20 by 30 so what I normally do is I put a trash bag over these and then put these in my shirt so it doesn't bleed through. Um, um, if they're the bigger sizes. And the reason, you can do it with a smaller size, but I do a galaxy twist where I twist the fabric and spray it on almost all of my shirts. And if it's tight on this board, I can't twist it. So in that, in that case, oh, did I finish this? Ross, there is an Elmer's brand of this at Walmart. I think I have a few, um, but they're more expensive. So uh, these are at Walmart, 88 cents. Um, you can just wash them off, but the bag helps um, to keep the bleach off of it. So, I mean, it is, I mean, I guess it's foam, but it kind of has paper on the top of it. So um, after you get it in the shirt, then you, it's not gonna have that bleed through. So for the smaller shirts, I usually, these are older foam boards, so they're kind of wonky, but um, for the smaller ones, I usually put them on a foam board, like lay them on top, just so if I need to move them off my table or something that it's easier to do. So, but for the smaller sizes, I end up using um, placemats, just plastic placemats from wherever, cheap plastic I mean I have like 400 of them and for each shirt I put four so two at the top two at the bottom it kind of depends on your design though if you're just gonna have a design in the middle and then just kind of like bleach splatters around you wouldn't need that many you would just probably put one at the top um, wherever you're gonna have the heaviest bleach but um, these you've seen these before I think I do have a basketball one in here so, but most of these are baseball except the one so I have the baseball lace at the top, the baseball lace at the bottom, and the uh, number in the middle. So I kind of just cover all my bases. And I actually put a little piece of my cardboard in the sleeve because my lace runs across my sleeve too. So if you, um, it's better to have more than not enough if you don't want any of that bleed through. So uh, after I get the uh, boards on the shirt, I have them kind of separated into order so I can keep them straight. Of course, that one. 11. That one blew off, so there it is. Okay, so that order goes up there. So I get them all laid out. I'm going to put this one down here because it's red and it's harder to bleach. So that's going to get more sun kind of late in the day. Uh, this is a 45. That's just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And and then, like I said, if you've watched my videos, you've probably heard my chickens and you're uninfected. But if that is a surprise to anyone, <laughs> and Rico has to talk back to them, obviously. Okay, so this one goes here. That's my uh, basketball one. 
I'll move that. Okay, so I left this one so you can kind of see what I do. It's a medium, so I gotta put it on the board. Lay it on the board. Lay it out. And we just take a couple of these place mats. Got all kinds of stuff running around. I got my cats, my turkey, and I'm sure my hair is crazy. Wind's blowing. But how nice is this weather? Oh my gosh, we just went to Texas in that ice storm. I'm in Southwest Missouri from Texas. So we went to Texas in that ice storm for my nephew's wedding and it was not a good time. I'm gonna say that. So I just get them in there the best I can. Um, straight. And then I'll also show you what I do for the sleeves. Hope I'm talking loud enough because it is windy. So I have all these little pieces of cardboard. Well, it's kind of thin craft. I don't know. It's thicker than craft paper. But anyway, I just stick it in this sleeve because that's where the, uh, the baseball lace goes across. So I'll just stick them in the sleeve so it doesn't... Uh, run through. I don't mind spots getting back to the back of the shirt because I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to bleach it on the back anyway, but I just don't want a random baseball stripe on the back because I'm not putting a baseball stripe on the back. So I don't want that to bleed through in a pattern like it would if I didn't put these in there. So get the papers put in the sleeves in some of my past videos I've said that I don't put anything in between yeah that changes sometimes I don't it just depends on the design but it's better safe than sorry so I get it put in the side um, I'll go over a little bit about bottles and all that good stuff this one <laughs> this is my redneck bottle if y'all can see I've got duct tape or painters tape I've got rubber bands my husband just bought me some new ones but for bleaching this is amazing it's from Lowe's. It's the Zep brand and it's a bleach resistant sprayer. I've had this one for probably, I don't know, eight months or so. And it hasn't shown the slightest bit of trouble spraying. Most of the other sprayers that aren't made for bleach or cleaners, um, it'll the bleach just eats the mechanism in there and, and you don't get very many sprays out of it and I use a lot of bleach so anyway these are from Lowe's um, I dropped this one and it broke so I was trying to make it work while I couldn't find any more so anyway so that one's for Lowe's and this one I use you'll see but I use for my little speckles not for the main um, area my favorite favorite bleach bottle of all times and I took the label off so I can see where to put the bleach but this is a Febreze bottle from Walmart. Um, it has Febreze in it, obviously. I just get home, pour out the Febreze, wash out the bottle, take off the label just so I know it's not Febreze and spray it all over my couch or something crazy. Uh, I put the line just because I always, always use 50-50 water bleach. Never full strength. There's no need to use full strength. Um, it obviously will eat the shirt more. Um, I mean, even if it doesn't, it, it's harsh. There's no need to use it. Plus, you're going to spend more money using full strength bleach on all your shirts. So, um, if you've seen any of my shirts, you'll see that they bleach just fine. Um, I mean, this is one of them. Obviously, this is my screw up, but 50-50 bleach. It does not need to be 100%. So, I put a line so I know where to put my bleach and then I fill the rest with water. Um, but anyway, this is what I use for the main design. So my stencils in all of my stencils, because it's a very, very fine mist and you're not gonna get, unless you sit there and oversaturate it, you're not gonna get that bleed through under your stencils like you're going to with a bottle like this or just a normal spray bottle that puts out more bleach at a time. So what I do is you mist lightly, spray lightly, and then you let it sit, you let it process. And then you come back and if it's not good, which it's usually not, you're gonna go over it again. But the light layers are gonna provide you that, I guess, let the stencil do its job by holding in the bleach rather than it being so oversaturated that it's going to have to wick into 
uh, the shirt or under the stencil, probably both. And you don't want to oversaturate it anyway because you don't need to and that's more like i'm not saying that 50 50 bleach water is not going to give you holes it's very possible but i've never had a hole knock on wood i say that in every video there goes all my papers um but anyway so this is one of my favorite my favorite bottle you can use the dawn power wash it's just not as fine and you get some bigger like drops within the spray so this is more of a consistent misting spray so the other thing that i use is um i use an adhesive spray i link all this down below but um this is taylor quilt basting spray and um geez now i can't remember if i got i think those are the ones i get at walmart i did buy a bunch online just so i had them because i have trouble buying or finding these but it, what it is is a quilt basting spray. It's adhesive to keep quilt squares down as before you sew them. I don't know, I'm not a quilter. But I think that's what it's for, but it's just an adhesive. It's a removable adhesive. Uh, you find it in, I'm sure you can get it a lot of places, but I get it in the fabric department in Walmart. So what I do with these is I spray them on the back of every single stencil I put down. So I'll spray it on the back, I'll position it, and then I'll spray the uh, bleach. This just helps, especially on a day like this, helps it from blowing, helps to keep it down to prevent bleeds or oversprays getting under the stencil. Um, so anyway, it's just a, a removable um, adhesive spray, sorry. So, okay, so I'm gonna do this one for you or while I'm on camera, just kind of so you can get an idea of some of the things that I do. So this one's number, oh, this one doesn't, of course, I picked one that didn't have a number. So it's just going to have the baseball laces at the top and the bottom. So if you have my stencils or you're interested in buying my stencils, um, this is how I do it. Isn't that a song? But anyway, I spray the back of my stencil. And I do it reverse since baseball stitches are One's going one way and one's going the other, so I like to replicate that in my shirts just so it looks like a real baseball. I'm a little extra like that. So I did those stitches down. I always do those stitches down. So I'm gonna do these stitches up. So what I do is I get really close to the neck and then I go down the sleeve. I'm not sure if y'all can see this real well. I think maybe on my other videos you can see it. It's My camera's a little bit higher so you might be able to see exactly where I'm placing that better. But um, this one does not get a number. If it got a number, I would do the number first and wait probably to put that on. But um, I do it so high on the neckline. Oh, this is a baseball, but uh, or I mean a football. I do it so high because um, a lot of people that order these without numbers put their own design on it with HTV or a screen print or whatever. So, um, or, or sublimation for that matter. Uh, so I leave a little bit of room uh, for the top and the bottom. So now what I'm going to do, sometimes I use the, the craft brown pages. I don't know. It just gets kind of, I don't know. It's easier to do it this way. <laughs> My craft paper is getting really old. And so, and so um, I need to get new. But I just use my placemat since I have them and they're plastic and we're good. So that's, I just cover up the, you know, the majority of the shirt. It's called masking. Um, if you have a little corner here on the very bottom, which I usually try to put my stencil to the bottom, so I don't have to worry about that. But I kind of just cover it up with my hand or you could use another piece of paper. And then I just really lightly go over it with my misting sprayer. Oh, another thing, I might need to change this actually now that I'm gonna tell you this. Um, bleach has a shelf life. So even if it's brand new from the store, if you're having trouble with it turning, especially, you know, a shirt or something that you know should bleach well, you're having trouble with it turning, it either sat on the store at the shelf too long, or, <laughs> no, sat on the shelf at the store too long. So by the time you get it, it is um, not as potent as it would be if it was brand new. Uh, another fine fa fun fact, geez Louise, I can't talk, is that in the summer months, the hypochlorite in bleach is more concentrated. That's because bleach degrades with heat. 
So um, the hotter it is, the faster it's going to degrade. So they put more hypochlorite in the bleach in the summer months. So by the time it gets to the store and you're going to use it, it's still effective. In the winter months when it's not hot and it's not, you know, breaking down the bleach as much, uh, they don't put as much in it. So there's a little fun fact for you. Um, so anyway, if it's not working, it either was old when you bought it, it was old out of your laundry room or wherever you got it to put in your bottle, or it's possible that it's set in the sun, in the light. It's also light sensitive. That's the reason I love this bottle. There is a bottle that's a Mr. Clean whatever, but it's a clear bottle. So if you take that label off, and even if you don't, the light's gonna get to it much faster than in this Febreze bottles, because this is pretty much like um, a bleach bottle. It's opaque, so the light's not gonna get to it. I also don't try, excuse me, try to leave it in the sun very long because I just don't want it degrading, or I don't even know if that's the right word. That sounds right. Um, but I go through bleach so often that I really don't have, you know, that problem. But if it's sitting straight in the sun, I'll just kind of move it to where it's shaded. Um, obviously, it's not going to break down in like one day, but I don't know. It's habit, I guess. So anyway, so I like that because, uh, you know, your bleach isn't exposed to the light. So this one, it's clear. Well, it's frosted, I guess I would say. It's not clear, clear, but it's going to degrade in this bottle or break down in this bottle faster than in this bottle. So, um, I don't know if you guys can see this. I have a terrible angle over there. I should have put you up higher. But anyway, it's already starting to turn. It's definitely not the Royal anymore. I'm gonna make sure I got the right ones because they're blowing everywhere. So anyway, I'll go on to the next one. I'm just gonna use the paper for this one if y'all can see, but that's not a good one. So again, this is like, it's kind of like craft paper. Um, you can get it like where, uh, the moving supplies are boxes and stuff like that this is actually a little bit thicker honestly don't know where this comes from if i see something and i'm like "Ooh, i can use that for this then i just grab it so i don't always know where they come from but um and be mindful of the wind too like i just i have a little tiny spot right there so i just went ahead and covered it up because the, the bleach will carry um so that's that one and we're done. If you put masking over somewhere, like if I had a number, I would move these so the the mask wasn't over the number and the sun could get to the bleach that would be on the number. I'll go ahead and do this one because it's a closer to you might be able to see better. That tripod that just doesn't go up very high. Sorry. Um, so this is a really small shirt. This one's a extra small. So just make sure I have it lined up good. Just one number, that's good, since it's such a small shirt. Anyway, oh, sorry, just spray on the back. <laughs> the back, not the front. <laughs> there we go, back. Uh, line it up, about three fingers down is normal from the neck. Larger shirts, I kind of try to do it a little bit further down, actually, um, because of body types you know that's you don't want it way up here you kind of want it down here and um for the bigger shirts i try to put it down a little bit more this one's uh kind of get a basketball backboard with the I need to make sure that's not gonna overlap yeah that's gonna overlap some so i'm not gonna put that on yet we're gonna do that in two steps because of that two steps i think that's a dance or something so I'm just gonna, I do use, I wish I would, I wish I knew the name. I don't know. Maybe I can go get it and put it in the comments or, or in the description. I ordered some adhesive off like Macari or something. I, I've never used it before. I used Poshmark and stuff, but anyway, and I got a whole case of adhesive for really cheap and it's pretty good. Um, this is my favorite, but, um, it was way cheaper. So as long as it works, I'm good. I, when I find these, I go ahead and buy them. So I, I kind of have the other ones in the um, in my craft room. So, so what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna let this process until I think that it's good. And then I'll remove the masking, I'll remove that one stencil, and then I'll do the backboard stencil because it was overlapping a little bit. The, the basketball net was off the shirt. 
it's because it's an extra small so it's you know a pretty small so I'll just let that go until I think I have it okay um, I have if you're going to do bulk shirts I mean they're gonna probably have to um, cut multiple stencils if you're doing stencils because it just doesn't I mean it doesn't go fast if you only have one set of baseball laces so um, I'll do one more right here. I'm trying to think of anything else that I've kind of left out that maybe I could go over for the ones who have never watched any of my videos before. Um, okay, so I'll tell you this while I'm masking and stenciling this one. Um, after I get done, I don't rinse them. I probably should. I know a lot of people that do, but I don't have any problems, so I guess, you know, until I have a problem, I don't change up my process. Uh, so after I get them bleached, I will take them inside, or if I have a bunch, I have, I don't know where it is, I have a plastic box out here somewhere that um, I use too, but I put water. If I'm out here, I do use cold water. I prefer to use hot water. Um, Clorox themselves says that the temperature of the water with this kind of process doesn't really matter because the, the water's not in contact with the shirt or the bleach for that amount of time. But scientifically, uh, hot water breaks down bleach faster than cold water. Cold water is for like, um, you know, the, uh, what am I trying to say? So like fading of colors or bleeding of colors in shirts and for shrinkage and that kind of stuff and that's really not an issue with this so um i usually use hot water with everything with this process if i have a bunch and i'm do gonna uh, rinse them out and or uh, neutralize them out here i do use cold water because it comes out of the hose over there so um not a not a real big deal but I don't know if I'm inside I try to use hot water and then when I wash I always use hot water um, so I don't think I'm gonna get this on there because it's bigger no okay so we're gonna have to wait for that one too the number uh, so anyway so I take them inside or I put them in a bucket out here and then I neutralize them in a solution of one part peroxide just hydrogen peroxide to 10 parts water. So uh, you don't need a lot of peroxide. The peroxide actually can mimic, it's like hair bleach is mostly peroxide. Um, peroxide can mimic the effects of bleach if used in concentrated amounts. And so you don't want to use that much. And, and again, you don't need that much, so why pay for that much? You don't need full strength peroxide to neutralize. So one part uh, peroxide, 10 parts water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Sometimes I let it sit longer. Um, you know, it just depends on what I'm doing. It's not gonna hurt it to sit longer. But I mean, as a general rule, you want to wash the bleach out of your shirts as fast as possible. I mean, it just goes without saying that the longer that it's on there, the faster it's going to eat through it or the better chance it's going to eat through it. And, you know, I don't want to give anybody any false hope, but like I said, I've never had a hole. And, I mean, I've left some, especially in the winter and stuff, I've left some for hours upon hours. So, um, I'm using, I use whatever I can get, honestly. But, generally, 90% of my business is Bella Canvas, which are 48 uh, poly, 52 cotton. So, it's a little bit higher cotton, so not quite as vibrant of an image if you're going to sublimate of course we're not sublimating on these and I also use the Gildan uh, 640 is the style number 6535 so they're 65 poly 35 cotton um, those are better for sublimation I mean the more poly the better for bleach but I mean I use mostly belly canvas and don't have an issue um, let's see what else I do use Gildan 5050s I use tri blends um, I use some of the other brands like Fruit of the Loom. Uh, I don't use Toltex very much at all. 
I do use Fruit of the Loom hangs maybe if I can find them somewhere or if I can't find um, what I need in Bella Canvas or Gildens. Um, the website that I use is usually Shirt Space. Um, I kind of put stuff in my cart it, on Jiffy.com. It's another shirt site, and I put the cart put the same stuff in my cart on Shirt Space and see which is cheaper. Sometimes there's a different threshold for uh, free shipping that might make a difference. Sometimes some shirts are more at one place and cheaper in the next, but then the other shirt you need is the reverse. So I just kind of look at things. Oh, while I got you here, I guess I'll show you um, how I do my numbers. So if the, the numbers are individual, so that way I can put together two numbers for any combination. So this one happens to be 11. I used to tape them, but decided that that's way too much trouble. So um, I'm just gonna spray the adhesive on the, just that very edge right there. And then I just lay it somewhere flat. I know y'all can't see this, but um, you'll have to go with what I'm telling you. <laughs> I just, you know, line it up with the other stencil, with the other one, make sure that it's even. And then I just stick it down. So now they're stuck together. They're not going anywhere. And then I put the, on my shirt. So I'll do the number first in case the laces are gonna overlap. So again, you'll line it up three, about three fingers down. I know I can get at least one lace on this one. There we go. I'm gonna have to cut some new ones because I've got so much adhesive built up. So after I get done with these, I take them over to the um, hose and I wash them off really good because even dried um, bleach can transfer. So if you don't wash them off and you use them again the next day, you're going to get transfer of some of that dried bleach and you're going to have light areas where you don't want light areas. So, um, you know, rinse them off. I can make that work. First one I've been able to do all at one time. So top again, and then it runs down the length of the sleeve. If I do the backs, I don't do the backs anymore unless somebody requests it. But if I'm going to put the lace on the back, I don't put it so high on the collar. I'll turn the shirt over. I'll put this bottom one pretty much in the same spot. But the top one is going to be more in the middle of the neck and then go like under the sleeve. It can move in on the shirt a little bit because you're not you know, worry that you're going to get in the way of a design that somebody might put on the shirt. So, um, it's going to go more kind of in the middle of the shirt than it would otherwise. Um, so, oh, so anyway, so you, uh, wash the stencils off. I hang them up. My husband put, I don't know if y'all can see it, but, um, there's a clothesline right there with clothespins. And so after I wash my stencils, I just hang them all up and, you know, they're dry within a fairly short amount of time. Um, and then I just bring them down the next day. I have a shelf over here with all of my stencils. That's handy. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else you guys need to know. So after I, uh, I know, don't like do what I'm doing. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm just doing that because I need to do the number in the middle. So I just didn't want to put adhesive all over those placemats. Um, after you have neutralized your shirts for 10 to 15 minutes, then you just wring them out, throw them in the washer, and you're good to go. I wash and dry like normal. I don't do anything special. I put them in there. Now, I will say this, that if you're using, I do use free and clear bleach on all, or I mean, <laughs> free and clear detergent on all of my customers' uh, shirts. And whatever you use on your shirts, if you're selling them, you have to disclose what it is that you're using in your listings. Um, I do use, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar, but I use a detergent. It's really a detergent, but I don't really use it as a detergent. It's called, uh, Tyler's Glamour Wash, and um, 
It's in the scent High Maintenance, and I love the scent, and all of my customers love the scent, so I can't quit using it. I use it for my own laundry, too, but um, so now I'm just moving these away from the number only because I sprayed this lace and I want the sun to get to it. Otherwise, I wouldn't move anything until I determined if it was processed enough. Um, I think I'm going to have to spray this lace again. I'm definitely going to have to spray this lace. I wish I could see some of this better. I'm going to bring you over here. But I'm not going to let you get off the tripod. Oh, maybe. Okay, so as you can see, I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Yeah. These are really white. They're really good. Um, the green I might need to do again. But as you can see, I'm trying to see what I'm showing you. I got a weird glare. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might be able to see it. Anyway, I don't know if you can see real good, but it's obviously the color of the shirt and it's not lightning like um, the bleached area is. So if I would had removed this, then I would have had to put that back and spray it again. And we don't want that. We want, you know, you to be able to leave it there and then respray if needed. It's way too much work. That's good. It's way too much work to have to re-stencil. Now, if you only have a couple stencils and you have to go on to your next shirt, then you have to do what you have to do. But this way is a lot easier because you're not going to have to re-stencil. It's really hard, especially if the shirt has moved. It's really hard to get that stencil to line up right again. Plus, you're going to have bleach on it already. So if you take it off and use it somewhere else, that bleach may transfer. Um, so anyway, you... Uh, yeah, I have bleach on that placemat, so I'm not going to use it again. Got to find one that I don't have it on. That would be a new one. Um, so anyway, after you neutralize, you will wash normally. I don't do anything weird. Like I said, you're going to have to tell your customers what you've used in case anybody has an allergy. Um, just like poly tea for people that sublimate that, you know, people say, what about people with allergies? If you tell them your process and they still decide to buy from you, I mean, that's, I hate to say it, it sounds terrible, but that's on them. You have disclosed your process and then they have the decision to buy from you or not. So just list what you use. So I use free and clear detergent. I do use the Tylers um, and I just wash on a, a quick wash actually for my customer shirts. Um, and then I just dry normally and then um, they're ready to package and go. So, um, Really, that's all I have here. I can, I will show you stuff at the end um, after I get it, them all done, just so you can see what they look like. I could go get Rico, so y'all can say hi to him like you like to do. So let me get him. Come say hi to the people. Come say hi. I know these people don't care about turkeys, but they love you. So this is Rico Suave. He's my best friend. He's getting very heavy. Ugh, I love you. He's a sweet boy. To me, not my husband. He tries to protect me from my husband, which doesn't always turn out well for him, but can you say hi? You just go open your mouth. Well, that's not nice. All right, there's Rico for you. You gonna say bye? You don't talk very well. <laughs> What are you doing on my turkey? Say hi, since you already. Hi, buddy. Not to him, to my people. Hi, people. I don't think they can see you. I just told him that he doesn't like you. Come over this way so they can see you. And this is why he carries this around. Yeah, I'm glad I got him before you came. Body. Okay, I'll come back and show you finished products. This is kind of a strange angle. Of course, my husband has to blow leaves. But um, I just wanted to show you kind of how I do. I took off my stencils. And so what I do, I kind of like all my, I don't know why I keep saying kind of, but I like all my shirts to look the same unless requested otherwise. So I do a galaxy twist, which is just a twist of fabric. like a, It's like a tie-dye galaxy twist. And I spray, and then a galaxy twist up here in this shoulder, 
and I spray. I did the same thing on the back. It does not get stenciled on the back, which I think I already said. Um, but I do the galaxy twists on the back, and I know there's like a terrible shadow. So then now here comes this, the Zep uh, bottle, and I just lightly, probably couldn't see that, but it's just lightly giving it a little bit of a, a drop look to it. And then um, I'll let this process on this side, and then I'm gonna flip it over, and I'll do the galaxy twists, which I usually kind of bring them in a little bit on the back, and then I do the um, the spray. And I'm telling you all this, but I complete, I mean, copy what I'm doing for sure. I mean, I'm telling you what to what I do, but I definitely think that getting um, your own look and being different from other people is definitely beneficial because I mean obviously you, the the market is oversaturated or saturated with shirts like this so if you have a difference in it it will make you stand out I think the hubby was embarrassed by the leaves so now he's blown all the leaves anyway okay so uh I got the basketball one on this just wanted to show y'all some progress um this is the front of this one it will not be getting a number I'll be doing pretty much the same on the back without the laces um I just got this one um masked and sprayed again uh this one's pretty much done on the front uh, this is the one that I was showing you where I did the galaxy twists and stuff. Um, still have this one. So, um, once I get that all off, then I will flip them over, let the back process. I'm going to show you kind of how, I'll show you on this one when I get there, um, you know, how the easy the stencils come off and, and all that good stuff. But, I mean, as you can see, I don't have any bleeds. I mean, I do have bleeds. I mean, holy cow. Uh, can I turn you around? I don't think I can turn you around right now, but I mean, the shirt I'm wearing bleeds. That's why I'm wearing it. Because <laughs> I've been good with customer. But you'll get better with it over time. The important thing to remember is one, um, the mist sprayer, the fine mist sprayer, which is this. I'll show you a little bit of this. So there was that for Breeze Bottle. The fine mist sprayer is going to help. And you're going to spray in very light layers. Here's that Zep bottle. Um, the one you buy will probably not have all this fancy stuff on it. <laughs> and then here's a little bit closer up of the uh, spray that I use. Adhesive spray, that is. Um, so I'll show you kind of how I remove the stencils in a little bit. Just so you can um, get an idea of how that process goes. I'm just going to show y'all just another little trick. That if a um, if you get a big spot somewhere that looks like it's bleeding under your stencil, I have one right here on the basketball. If you take the tip of a paper towel and just kind of you know put it down on the spot, it's gonna wick up into the paper towel and it's gonna stop wicking underneath your uh, stencil. Um, what likely happened here is as I was spraying, I got a drip and it dripped in that one spot. And then into, it's a very small, the smallest spot on here, pretty much, except maybe these lines. But, and so the bleach just had nowhere to go and it had to go underneath. I'll show y'all if I can get you over there this time. I just dropped my iPad, so, um, okay. You got to see it somewhere. I don't know what you're looking at, but golly, the glare is terrible. Anyway, it's right here. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, but it went, it dripped right in there. And then there's, I can see a little bit under this stencil. So you just take the, the corner and just dab it on there. And then it's going to wick up into the paper towel rather than wicking down under the shirt. I mean, down under the stencil. And um, that's going to hopefully keep that from continuing to wick underneath. Um, so that's something to look for too that you know don't spray it and then just walk off immediately see you know what it looks like um, right after you spray it you know for a couple seconds at least just so you can get an idea of um, if it's going to be too much and I'm going to spray this a little bit in some of the other areas but like I said that's usually because there was a drip this one doesn't really do that so I don't know really what happened there but um, it's going to get a little 
little bit of a more of a drip and like I said it just had nowhere to go so it went under my stencil but and that goes with anything if you get a spot like these little tiny spots on this shirt you get one that's a little bit too much and you think it's gonna you know just really eat the fabric more but it's more concentrated than you'd like you can just you know put this on I mean you can dab if you want but that's just gonna get you know bleach in other spots so I tend to just put a little bit of that paper towel on there and then it just sucks up and wicks up into uh, the paper towel rather than wicking onto your um, or into your shirt or under your stencil anymore since I have this one here I think we're good on this one so I'm just gonna pull off the masking whatever you're using for your masking and then you're just gonna pull off your stencil just make sure that you don't have anything on your hands um, Usually try to wipe my hands off as you can see I don't know if you can see my pants you saw them at some point in time but I wipe them a lot um, so this is not done processing down here yet it's just I know that I've gotten it good and covered now and so um, I'm just gonna do the rest so again I'm gonna do the galaxy twist and if you can see I'm gonna have to pull this in because it won't really twist that's why I don't put the smaller shirts um, on the foam or d don't put the foam inside the shirts because I'm not going to be able to twist them You can use any sprayer you'd like but this I just use my fine mist sprayer like I said that power wash bottle It tends to have it, it's a mist but it has a little bit more of a speckled to it rather than just a you know a single mist if That makes sense um, So I like to use that one regardless. I use that power wash one sometimes like I said depending on the look I'm going for and then you're just gonna spray it with that one that's what I do anyway so pretty much I'm gonna let that last one um, process a little bit I'm gonna um, stencil the number and then we're gonna be ready to flip all these over okay I'm gonna show how to how I remove these stencils and then I'm gonna stencil uh, the middle my bottles and adhesive and stuff is like tape when you're you know taping Christmas presents and you constantly lose your tape and your scissors and all that good stuff never in the right spot okay so after um they get done I could leave this one on I'm gonna spray this one just a little bit more had some weird stuff happening with that adhesive so I did take off the masking so I'm just gonna be real careful where I put it just get some of that the edge right there that was great i just sprayed my number stencil um so anyway so after um it's done and you're ready to uh, remove the stencil i showed this in another clip i just don't know if i'm gonna link it because it was different so anyway um you know i just hold it make sure you don't have anything on your hands and you're just gonna pull it off it's like not difficult at all I just wanted you guys to see how easy um, this adhesive comes off when you're done. It's not bad at all. Sometimes you just pull it and it doesn't even pull up the shirt at all. So um, I have to make sure that this is okay because I didn't realize it was on top of it when I was spraying it. So now it has some bleach on the back. I think we're good. Although I'm going to spray this right here. I was gonna use it when I put the laces on and I realized that I really didn't have enough room with that top one. So anyway, so I waited until I pulled that off. So again, about three inches from the shirt or from the uh, neck is normal. That's uh, pretty much what you do, what you go for. This is a little bigger shirt. So like I said before, I'm gonna move it down just a tad, not very much at all. And I do tend to, move it away from here be just because there's a lot going on in this area so i do sometimes uh move it down because of that um so that looks good now i'll have to figure out if i can use these because i've yeah, they're fine once these are dried they don't really transfer a whole lot of the bleach um just because it's not touching the shirt in that many places and you're not gonna leave it on here for very long so definitely not a problem ow that thing was biting me um 
All these other ones are about done. And then um, when I get them all finished and uh, washed and everything, I will definitely come back and um, give you a look just so you're able to see. That sucker hurt. Um, what happens. I think I said at the very beginning of one of these videos that I was going to move this red one down here because it was harder to bleach. Um, <laughs> it's actually not quite in the sun anymore. I'm running out of bleach. Um, the red and the um, dark heathers and stuff, the darker grays and everything, they take quite a while and they really benefit from having sun. You don't have to have sun ever to bleach. Um, it, you don't. I mean, it, it, you bleach a shirt accidentally in the dark washer and it bleaches. Um, sucker made me mad. Um, but with the sun, it helps a lot. Um, it helps to process the bleach faster. So what happens is if the sun isn't out, your bleach is likely going to dry before it processes all the way. It will continue to process once dry to some extent, but very little. And it would take it a really long time to actually process um, to what we want, you know, the white um, once it's dry. It would just take forever. So, um, I really recommend trying to utilize the sun if you can. Um, you can do lights, you can do all kinds of stuff. Don't do it inside. Um, I do use my tanning bed sometimes, but it is in our detached garage shop. Um, and I leave the door open, of course, and everything. Uh, but I do stick it in there sometimes if I'm like at the end of the day and I just need to get it that extra you know, that little extra oomph to it. Um, but you don't have to have sun, but like I said, it really helps. It's gonna process it a lot faster. You're not gonna be standing out for, here for hours and hours and hours. So those who say that you don't need sun, that's true, but you don't want it to be out there so long that it dries without processing because then you're gonna have to put more bleach on it and more bleach is obviously not good for fabric. Um, and, and all that good stuff. So, um, definitely utilize the sun if you can. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier um, with bleaching. But um, the reds just take a long time to process. They kind of go, of course, that pinky first. So, they just take a little bit longer to process. The dark heathers, they go like, depending on which one it is, it sometimes goes a little gray before it lightens up. Sometimes it goes um, like an orangey or a pink before it lightens up. And, which is fine sometimes for some designs, but if you're looking for um, the lightest bleach you can get, dark heathers need to be done in some sort of light, preferably good sun. Um, a lot of people talk about UV index and all that good stuff. I've never really looked into that. I'm sure there's something to that, but um, I just try to get them sunny. I mean, my husband made this table for me and we move it all around this back area with the gravel depending on the time of year because the sun doesn't always hit it right and we have a ton of trees so in the sun or in the summer when the trees are fully leaved it makes it very difficult so we move this table around quite a bit um i do put them on the ground sometimes um i put them out in the front of our house where we have you know more of the driveway area but this is just easier so you don't have to bend down so um, at this point, I'm probably just boring you guys. So I will show you everything when it's done. So another thing that I was going to mention is that, I'm not turning it over at this moment, but when you uh, are ready to flip these shirts and if you're gonna do the back and I don't purposely wait for any of it uh, to dry before I wash it. Some people wait till it dries until you wash it or whatever, but I don't even do that. But I definitely don't wait until the front's dry to flip it over. So once you uh, get it sprayed on the front and it processes to however much you want, when you go to flip it over, flip it over quick 
and then don't move it. So don't, you know, like when you flip it over, don't decide, oh, it needs to be over here because then you're just dragging the wet bleach that's on the table or the foam or whatever you have. You're sliding it across the table and you're gonna get these weird bleach spots other other places. So um, once this go, you know gets to where you want it and you flip it, just leave it. Leave it exactly where it lands. Don't be moving it around. So if you're if you have a you know small spot, then you know plan out your attack before you flip it over, because when you you know drag it in the uh, bleach, then obviously it's gonna bleach in other places on the shirt. So flip it and leave it where it is. Bleach the back and then pull it up. So a lot of people have questions on why they have these weird places, these weird bleach spots here and there on their shirts. And there's lots of reasons why that could happen, but that's definitely one of them that I don't think people really think about. So just another uh, tip, trick, whatever you wanna call it.